Santera Arlene Cisnerosena shares the importance of her New Mexican heritage. In colonial times, it was only the Hispanic men who connected with the community. Although I think women were involved, they just never got the credit. The early Santero who produced the work of Santos, there was a woman right alongside of this Santero, I'm certain, that produced the work just as well. There may have been schools in which the women were involved. I believe that's so. But we don't know of any pieces that were actually done solely by a woman that is documented. So today, the, the women, the Santeras, carry on a tradition that probably was brought from the women of earlier times. There is definitely a feminine aspect what people see in the work that I do. Santos should look friendly. You should be able to talk to them. And so that's what I bring, I believe, in terms of the uh, feminine side. The reason that I connect with this form is because it was a family thing. It was something that I learned early on that was important. I'm Norteña. I have roots in Cuesta and Costilla, which mean quite a bit to me. My grandfather was a sheep herder. I have this prayer book. It's sort of an old diary that he took with him he wrote in his alabados and his prayers in this fine script. It is a, a beautiful example of what men in those days were thinking and doing and learning. I never knew my grandfather. He died long before I was born. But he left pieces, and I have one, which is a pencil drawing on flower sack. He was a Santero. I'm following in my grandfather's footsteps and I'm carrying on the devotional faith that he had in the art form that he had. I paint with natural pigments for the most part. A few years ago, my dad, who's from Cuesta, said that there was a pocket of oxides. It was a iron oxide. He knew exactly where it was. And he says, is this what you, you've been working with? Is this what you want to paint with? And I said, if you have access to it, I'd love to have some. So he and a friend of his climbed this mountain and came back with three colors of iron oxide. It's sort of a, a gold and then a red gold and a um, almost off-white. And so I still use them to this day. This tradition talks about New Mexico, but it talks about devotion and faith first and foremost. I believe that I'm passing on what I know in terms of telling the stories, yes, but it is devotional. When it leaves the studio, this is a functional piece. This is a devotional piece. We have probably 30, 35 saints that are well known in New Mexico. Those of us who have been here a long time know about Santo Niño de la Tocha, know about San Jose, Saint Joseph, who was a strong saint. He, he must have been an extraordinary man. Today, we tell the story about St. Joseph who carries a staff. In New Mexico, the hollyhock is named the Bara de San Jose. 
the staff of St. Joseph. In my work, I find it totally necessary to include the hollyhock within any imagery where San Jose is involved. Our Lady uh, of Sorrows, Dolores, who has seven daggers in her heart. It's a, it's a harsh story, it's a harsh image, but it's so positive in terms of patronage. She is patron of women who want to have children. She's a healer. She helps in, in times of sorrow. So it's a positive patronage with a harsh image, but I can soften the image, perhaps with just the eyes. There's Santa Librada, who is patron of independent and liberated women. Well, Santa Librada never actually lived. She's totally legendary. She's patron of liberated women because, here's the legend, her father wanted her to marry a heathen and she would have nothing to do with it. And so she prayed very hard that she wouldn't have to marry anyone. She was totally devoted to God. And one day she just grew a beard. Well, this enraged her father so much that he had her crucified. It's a very sad, hard story to tell. And today, the image, if it's painted by a male, will often paint a woman crucified with a beard. I can't bring myself to paint a beard on her. So what I paint is a very lovely woman, crucified, yes. That's the differences in terms of telling the story. We can tell the same story of Santa Librada and, and know that she would want us to tell the story with her as a, a lovely woman. Life in New Mexico is about family, tradition, culture, and faith. Without the faith, without the prayers, without the stories, we lose who we are. The stories that we know that are, are, are all too common, but are they? Do people really know these stories currently? So for that reason, it becomes my duty a job, a responsibility, to tell the story in my work. And that's what I feel I need to do.